Hello, boys and girls. It's currently back in my living room in South May, South Berwick, Maine. Uh, coming to you through Karen Reed. And the book I have for you this morning is called Albert. It's written by Donna Jo Napoli. And she writes for both the children and teens. And that's really all I could find out about her, except that she's done a bunch of books. It's illustrated by Jim LaMarche, who lives in California and has done a bunch of books. And that's all I could find out about him. Okay. Albert. Albert sat at his table and drank tomato juice and listened to the noises of the morning. The people in the apartment above clattered downstairs and out the door on their way to work. The dog next door barked hello to everyone who passed. Children giggled on their way to school. These were good noises. Albert stood up and worked his hand out between the grill work above the window. He wanted to check the weather. The garbage truck rumbled by. That wasn't a good noise. Albert shook his head, too cold. He shut the window and rubbed his hands to warm them. Then he sat down to read the comic strip. The next day, Albert ate lunch and listened to the noises of midday. The mailman sang as he slung his pack over his shoulder. The snack vendor shouted out the day's special, golden bean cakes. The flower lady laughed with her customers. Good noises today, very good noises. Albert went to the window and reached his hand toward the maple tree. How was the weather today? Two men walked past arguing. That wasn't a good noise. Too damp. Albert shut the window and wiped his hands on his trousers. Then he took out a pack of cards and did card tricks. And you could see him bouncing a card on his nose. The next day, Albert said, too hot. And the next day, too breezy. Albert told himself that when the weather was right, just right, he put on his hat and go for a walk. And every day the weather seemed good at first, but after a moment more, it turned out that the weather was just never right. So Albert listened to baseball games on the radio and cut pictures out of magazines and wrote postcards he never mailed. Then one sunny day, Albert stuck his hand out the window and the next thing he knew a twig appeared in it. Albert looked around in surprise. A cardinal flew by and dropped in another twig. And then there were two cardinals, a bright red male and a brown yellow female. And both of them were dropping twig after twig after twig. Albert watched, dumbfounded, as his now cupped hand filled to the brim. The cardinals fluttered and fussed and poked and pulled. They heaped grasses into the center of the twigs. 
Finally, the female shaped the nest to fit her breast and settled in. Albert stared at her. Um, excuse me, but my arm's not a branch. But the cardinal didn't even look at him. She flew off, leaving a nest of four tiny eggs in Albert's hand. With his free hand, Albert scratched his head. If he pulled his arm in, twisting to get it back through the grill work, the nest would surely fall apart. So, he stood there. The mother cardinal returned. Albert stood with his arm out the window. Mrs. Cardinal, I think you've picked a sp poor spot to build a nest. But the cardinal just whistled and fell asleep. That night, Albert slept standing up. The next day, the mother cardinal kept the eggs warm while the father cardinal fed her. Albert rubbed his aching neck. Listen, I hate to disappoint you two, but I'm not sure this is going to work. The cardinals looked at Albert, then they preened each other. That night, Albert slept standing up again. The third day, Albert rotated his shoulders to get the cakes out. The mother bird flew to the ground and pecked at a grub. Albert took a good look at the eggs for the first time. Perfect sea blue ovals with red brown spots. The father bird flew down and chattered at the mother bird. She flew back to the eggs and sat on them. Pretty eggs, Albert said gently. The cardinal gave a quizzical chirp. Day after day, Albert stood, the nest in his hand. He began each day by watching the birds. Then he looked around. Once a plane roared overhead. Albert's first urge was to pull his arm in and shut the window. But the nets kept him there. So he watched the plane till it went out of sight. And soon he found himself dreaming about the places those passengers were going to visit and he smiled. Once a man and a woman came out of the building yelling at each other. They turned their backs on each other and both walked off in a huff. Albert wanted so much to pull his arm in and shut the window, but the nest was there, so he stayed put. About an hour later, the man appeared from one direction, and the woman appeared from the other. Each held a wrapped present. They laughed and hugged. Albert dreamed about what might be in those presents, and he smiled again. Albert didn't only dream. Whenever the mother cardinal hopped off the nest, even for a moment, Albert breathed his hot breath onto the eggs to warm them. And once when the mother cardinal was away, 
A cat walked along the ledge beneath Albert's arm. It flicked its tail and looked up curiously. It crouched, ready to spring. Albert screeched. The cat ran off. Albert chuckled. So he saved the nest. A week passed, and one morning when Albert opened his mouth, he peeped. The father caught Gardner looked at him askance, but Albert peeped insistently. The cardinal flew off. He returned with a beetle. Albert wrinkled his nose and jerked his head away. The cardinal ate the beetle. Then he flew off again. This time he returned with the blackberry. Albert ate it gratefully. From that day on, Albert peeped and the father cardinal fed him blackberries and Albert smiled at the noises all around him. Days passed. On the 12th morning, Albert spied a crack in one of the eggs. He put his face to the grill work so he could see everything perfectly. The second egg cracked, and the third, and the fourth. The baby birds pecked their way out, wet and squaggly. Good work, Albert smiled. Welcome. In the next few weeks, the mother and father cardinals fed their brood, including Albert, who learned to love seeds and berries and even eventually beetles. The mother sat on Albert's wrist and sang her joy. The father flew to the top of the maple and sang his pride. The parents whistled to the fledglings encouraging them to test their wings. Soon the first fledgling left the nest, then the second, then the third. But one stayed. He hopped up Albert's arm and pecked at his nose. He looked worriedly at the ground. Go for it, birdie, said Albert. Fly. The fledgling looked down again. He kept his wings close to his body. Albert stuck out his hat in front of the fledgling. Come on, he said, give it a try. The fledgling jumped into the hat. Albert tossed him up lightly. He fluttered a little and landed safely back in the hat with a peep. Albert tossed him higher. He fluttered a lot and landed back in the hat with a loud chirp. Albert tossed him high, high, high. The fledgling looked around and spread his wings. He flew to the maple tree and whistled. Albert smiled and whistled back. The nest sat empty in Albert's hand. He drew his arm in through the grill work and the nest fell. Albert looked at the grass and the trees and the sky. He listened to laughter nearby, a good noise, and the siren of an ambulance far off, a bad noise. And Albert knew now that the both were part of this big, wonderful world. He put his face up to the grill work and felt the wind and the sun on his cheeks. 
just right, he said. Albert smoothed his hair and brushed off his hat. After so long, he hardly looked like himself. He went outside for a walk. Now Albert walks often, and sometimes, just sometimes, when no one's looking, he flies. And you can see the cardinal on his head. Okay, great to hang out with you today. Take care until next time. Bye-bye.